Rushmore is a 1998 film directed by Wes Anderson and co-written by Owen Wilson, and it follows the story of young Max Fisher, played by Jason Schwartzman in his first major role, as a student at the prestigious Rushmore Academy. Max is a walking contradiction. On the one hand, he loves his prep school, which he attends on scholarship, and relishes in partaking in all the extracurricular activities he can. On the other, he is an underachiever academically. Max's subpar grades earn him a warning and probation from Rushmore's headmaster, Dr. Guggenheim, played by Brian Cox, who has grown weary of the team's seemingly random activism, like objecting to the school's plans to cancel Latin. Upon discovering a quote written in a library book, Max takes a sudden interest in Rushmore's first grade teacher, Rosemary Cross, played by Olivia Williams. Cross, a graduate of Harvard University and a recent widow, welcomes Max's help around her classroom, with some caution, of course, because the volunteering seems to come with romantic interest. Max's growing fondness of Miss Cross inspires the idea to convert part of the school's baseball field into an aquarium. This gets him expelled from Rushmore and relegated to plain old public high school. While on the surface, Rushmore might just look like an offbeat indie comedy and one short of laugh-out-loud moments, there really is a lot going on. Commentaries on death and the implications of social class clash with commentaries on adolescent priorities and middle-life crises, and this is all helped by the film's especially rich characters and dialogues. Max Fisher makes for a compelling protagonist on whom the focus almost always remains, but the colorful cast around him is equally and appealingly layered. Almost every personality gives lines that make a lasting impression, from schoolmates like Max's young, forgiving chapel partner Dirk Calloway and disfigured Scottish bully Magnus, to even adults like Max's aged, easygoing father, a barber that he identifies as a neurosurgeon. There's not a bad calling casting in this movie. Schwartzman has impressively managed to sustain, sustain a thriving career out of what might have only been an awkward teenage debut. This was a career-changing performance for Bill Murray, who reinvented himself as an offbeat indie guy, available for Wes Anderson and Jim Jarmusch, but few other directors. He won a number of supporting actor awards, including an independent spirit, and nominations, including a Golden Globe, earning him a critical respect above what his excellent leads in crowd-pleasing comedies had drawn him to this point. The dialogue is written and delivered with precision, and every line sticks with you in such a way that makes even the small and quirkiest details stand out. Like Miss Bloom being given a choice of sandwich on top of the parking garage rooftop meeting for Max to disclose her husband's affair. Moments like this, later echoed in Herman picking between Max's perfect attendance and punctuality pens, speak volumes about their characters and their worldviews, all while strengthening our investment and connection to the film. After all, we may not be able to relate to swooning for a teacher or stretching ourselves thin in extracurricular activities, but we know about tuna fish, peanut butter and jelly, and of course, baby carrots. The dry, understated humor might fall flat, if not so capably presented. Rushmore is the real birth of the Wes Anderson style. The director had done interesting things in Bottle Rocket, a perfectly logical predecessor in tone and execution, but here Anderson makes the jump to the style he had since preferred and heightens every scene's impact with his deliberate compositions, head-on camera angles, sharp editing, tactful slow motion, and outstanding use of music. This film is a lasting masterpiece and a crowning moment for one of the most influential directors of today.